But regardless of the reason that you're here, I think this is an opportunity for us to, to open our minds and open our hearts to the other players that are involved that we interact with every day. So the panel that I'll bring forth today, we've asked each individual person to identify themselves, state the reason that they're at this conference, state what they hope to learn from this conference, and just give a brief outline of what their responsibility is at the scene of a highway incident. So as I bring forth each panel member, that's basically the, the way that the, the process will flow. My name is Pete. I am VDOT. I design the roads. I build the roads. I maintain the roads. I pretty much own the roads. So if it happens on the road, I'm in charge. The reason that I'm at this conference today is perhaps to learn from this, the organization as to why when I receive gazillions of dollars from the federal government every year to do pretty much whatever it is I choose to do. We receive little respect when we're responding to an incident. What I would like to have happen is emergency legislation putting red lights and sirens on my yellow trucks. I'm the EMT on the ALS. I'm the fastest one in, I'm the first one out. If it's bleeding, bruised, dizzy, or dazed, I'm in charge. I've been doing this for a number of years, and I have a several issues that I would like to address to this conference. One being why, when I respond to an accident scene, I've extricated my patient. I have them tied to a backboard. I have the IV started and the ringers lactated. As soon as I'm ready to load that patient, I'm approached by a trooper who asked my patient, may I see your driver's license and registration card, please? My name's Larry. This is my brother, Daryl. My other brother, Daryl. We're from Larry Darrell and Darrell Towing and Recovery. We've come to this conference for a number of reasons, but first to say that the incidents that happen on the highways don't get cleared until my records clear it. I guess that pretty much makes me in charge. A number of issues need to be addressed when we're dealing with the towing community. First, what I'd like to learn from the participants of this conference is why is it we talk a lot about public-private partnership, and I'm pretty much the only private parts of this public-private partnership. I'm the one that has to pay for my records, which cost as much as fire trucks. I'm the one that has to pay for the drivers to be on standby, whether they're used or not. I'm the one that has to pay for all the insurance that the private sector has to pay for their employees. The question comes as to why, if I'm the private part of this public-private partnership, am I the last one called, told what equipment to bring instead of what the problem is? Why, if, <coughs> excuse me, being the last one called, I'm criticized for when I get there late, and the first call that I get when I get back to my shop is why I have charged so much. My name is Bob. I'm the traffic reporter's traffic reporter. I'm the spy in the sky and candy for your eye. <laughs> Each and every day I have millions and millions of listeners throughout the region and throughout the free world hanging on my every report. To those millions of people, I am in charge. They're looking to me to get people around, over, and, or, and through every piece of congestion on the highway. Now at the conference I hope to gain information as to why I cannot receive accurate and timely information. Just as an example as to what I'm talking about, merely yesterday, there was a two-vehicle crash on the interstate, involved a dump truck and a car. The roadway was blocked. 
I needed to be able to tell my loyal and faithful subjects how long the roadway would be closed. I approached the fire captain, asked how long will the roadway will be blocked? They said they have detected an excess of three ounces of diesel fuel leaking from the truck, have declared it a hazardous material incident, in the process of evacuating 500,000 people, and the road will be closed for a week. I asked the police officer how long the road will be closed. She told me she was finishing writing the ticket, would be done in a couple minutes, and the roadway would be open. I asked the record driver how long the roadway would be closed. I was told. They were told to bring a flatbed when really what they needed was a medium duty record for a class three overturned vehicle. They had to go back to the shop and get what they needed. I asked the VDOT representative on the scene how long the road would be closed. They said they would conduct a study, do some surveys, consult a slide rule, and get back to me in about six months. The question remains, why can I not receive accurate and timely information? My name's Jerry. I am the fire chief and I am in charge. I've been fighting fires, if it's blowing up, smoking or smoldering, for 25 years. I've written the manual on incident command. I've managed some of the largest incidents in the history of the world. <laughs> the question that remains today as to with all my experience of saving children and kittens, why, when it comes to highway incident management, does everyone feel compelled to tell me how to do my job? My name is Trooper Badass, <laughs> and I have a number of issues. First of all, Everyone professes to be in charge. Well, through my many, many decades of experience in law enforcement, I have learned that nonverbal communication is one of the best ways of getting a message across. So, through nonverbal, I will pose the question to you. Who's in charge? Who's in charge? Who's in charge? And yes, who's in charge? Number of issues that need to be addressed at the conference, one being that of response. The question remains is why, when we have a highway incident, do we respond 13 pieces of fire apparatus from seven different directions, and we get there, we park every one of them sideways in the road? And Jerry, please do not tell me it's because you have the most and the biggest toys. <laughs> my name's Rob and I'm the computer. I've got my cup, I've got my razor, I've got my paper, and yes, I have my cell phone. In keeping with AAA responsibilities of the responsible driver, we do operate hands-free. <laughs> I have tremendous amount of complaints to share with you today. I am a taxpayer. I pay your salaries, which pretty much makes me in charge. Each and every day when I'm operating on the highways of this region, I experience problems. I want all those problems to go away. I want nothing in the HOV lanes except me, even though I drive by myself. I do have the email address for the chief. I know Dr. Gridlock personally. And I wish to express to this group today the importance of me, the commuter, who you work for. My name is Gary. I'm your congressman. Each and every one of you is in charge. I appreciate the job you do. I experience the problems you face out there every day. Believe me, I feel your pain. I want you to know that I'll do everything in the world that I can do for you. If I'm reelected, the budget will be no problem. You'll have everything that you have. I am running for reelection, and also I am looking for a new intern. If anyone is interested, please <laughs> attach a photograph with the application. <laughs> 